we are in Sicily. Mixed architecture of three different styles, Norman, Arab and Byzantine. The accents and passages, nothing's reality. The, the most dangerous of the Mafia group ever existed in Cosa Nostra. Imagine every kind of masterpiece speaks by itself. Hey, I'm Melina Reddy and welcome to Foreign Influence. Following on from our previous episode, we are in Sicily with Serena and Paul from Sicily Art Tours. Today, we are going to discover temples of culture and wonderful masterpieces. Today we are in Cefalu and we are standing right in front of the beautiful Duomo built in 1131 by the Normans and it is a beautiful example of mixed architecture of three different styles, Norman, Arab and Byzantine. If you come inside with us you will have a look at beautiful mosaics of the Christo Pan Christ Pantocrato um, and it's just special, come with us. An Uber, but back in the days they had Portantina when elegant ladies in their magnificent dresses did not want to walk in their beautiful shoes two people would carry them around the town Polizia Generosa is a small village in the north of Sicily. It dates back to the 6th century BC. Fashion designer Domenico Dolce, one half of Dolce & Cabana clothing company, was born and raised in this town. We are staying in this beautiful accommodation called the Sicilian House. It is owned by an Australian family and it took them over nine years to renovate this magnificent mansion. You can see how much love they put into generating an art collection of paintings and sculptures. They even commissioned our own Paul Bataro to create a few masterpieces for them.
welcome to, to Modica. Um, what we're looking at is the historical part of the town that uh, is on top of what used to be a river. This was one of the first places in Sicily to be inhabited by the Siculi. Okay, so we're talking before the Greeks, before the Phoenicians, the Siculi came here. Of course, what we see today looks nothing like what it used to be back then. We're talking about 3,000 years ago, because even Modica was destroyed by the earthquake of 1693, and it was rebuilt in the Baroque style of that time. What stands out is the main church of San Giorgio. The style of the church reminds me of the waves of the sea. Can you see how it looks like it is moving? This type of architecture is in contrast with another type of architecture that you can see in the church on the right side, that is San Peter. So it is still a Baroque side, but the facade is straight. There is no movement, okay? Both churches, San Giorgio and San Peter's, are mother churches of Modica. We have two patron saints, Peter and George. And of course, there is a fight between who supports George and who supports Peter. <laughs> it used to be, in history, San Giorgio used to be the church of the nobles. Indeed, the one there is the castle of the Conti di Modica. Modica was ruled by the Contea for 700 years, from the 13th century to the 19th century, just before the unification of Italy. We are outside of Morica. Paul Bataro has invited us into his studio. So we are going to have a very special preview of his upcoming exhibition. So Paul is in Sicily, but he is getting all of his paintings ready to be shipped to Australia, Melbourne, to have his exhibition. So stay tuned and let's go and look at the very special treasures. This three panel, comes from a drawing when I was living in Rome with Sedana. And I said, how do you paint Rome? You know, how do you paint Rome? And you, just, you, know, you try and fit it all in. I don't know what you do. So I looked at Peronese and I liked the idea of Peronese and getting lost. And that's how you feel when you walk around Rome and live in it. So I just really, in the end, rudimentary, just picked up sections of it and created a collage that from a distance create this in and out passage, dreamlike sort of scenario. And then there are these weird accents and passages, nothing's reality. Uh, remember, you've got glare and you've got matte, but eventually these are all going to be varnished all the same. So even these are not ready. Museum, it's not only museum. The house guesting us, it's really a masterpiece of late Gothic style. Already Gothic style in Sicily, in Palermo, it's very interesting because it's Chiara Montano style. So it's our Gothic style that has some features different from other European Gothic style because we felt much more influence of Catalonia, for example. And this palace, called the Abatellis because of the family name who built it in 1495, it's one of the best masterpieces of this kind of style that we call late Gothic. And so, why is so interesting? Because uh, we are going to Renaissance, but we aren't yet right there. Abbatelli, he was very powerful. This family came from Tuscany. 
the age of Frederick II, one of the top Sicilian age with the Norman age. So 11, 12, 13th century are the top of the top in Sicily, so, sorry. As regard management system and the kingdom that has been one of the best of Europe under Normans and also under Frederick II. So this family came, they were a businessman, but because of a wedding in 15th century, they became nobles. This amazing masterpiece has been created in the 16th century and we can really see all the Gothic style up the top and why this is important because we can see the early stages of introduction of Renaissance style which we can really observe in the styles. This is maybe the most famous piece of art inside this museum because it's very big, because it's very strong, because it has been used by very important artists characterizing the world art. Like, for example, I will spoil suddenly that this has been used by Picasso to create his Guernica, for example. So it's a very, very important fresco. It's not a painting, it's a fresco. We call Death Triumph, but we don't know how it has been called it. So we don't know anything about that. It sounds strange. It sounds something uh, disappointing to us, but the reality is that in the history of art, we don't know exactly when it has been built. We don't know who created it. We only know that this fresco has been founded in a hospital. It was the Magno Hospital. Magno, it means the big, so the main city hospital in Palermo that was located in a palace called the Sclafani Palace that is one of the best 14th century palaces we have more or less in front of the King Palace so in the Paleopolis in the most ancient part of the city this fresco has been there but in, four, in 1943, it's been damaged by bombs. And so they decided to move from the hospital to this museum. It was impossible to deal with the restoration of such a big fresco, keeping it united. And that's why it has been divided, as you can notice, in four pieces. So what do we know? We know that it has been in a hospital. The topic you have seen before I have been speaking, so I guess you already have something in your brain. It speaks about the death, isn't it? We have the death in the center. Experts say to us that it is a, an ortus conclusus. In Latin, it means a garden. In Middle Age, the, this was the image of a paradise because it was a garden, so where nature is beautiful and when you can relax. So that is an idea very close to paradise. We have the eruption of the death, destroying this uh, happiness, this uh, calm, this uh, I mean, uh, uh, beauty. So we have two big forces, the evil and the goodness. And there are people that 
things shouldn't be put in a in a hospital because you enter and it will depress you. Of course, it's a warning. Attention, life is a transitory. So our body is nothing, we'll become dust. But our soul is another thing. Our soul is never ending. So if we are Christian, we should go to the direction of saving our soul. And imagine every kind of masterpiece speaks by itself. So you shouldn't need a guide to understand art, because art has been planned and exists just to communicate something. And that's true in medieval age, that's true in Renaissance, that's true even in Barocco. So of course, try to reevaluate your ability in understanding art, because the approach should be starting from ourselves. Palermo, before you eat your meal, they serve bread in a paper bag, very crispy, bread rolls, and they give you olive oil in the tin. Look at that. Smells, smells amazing. Then we'll take some salt, crush some salt. Break the bread and mm, mm, sensational. Buon appetito, mamma mia! We are on our Mafia tour and we are standing in front of the Court of Law and this amazing sculpture represents freedom. It's called the Wings of Freedom and they say that there is no freedom without justice. Thank you to join our tour. I'm Federico. I'll be your guide for the next uh, two hours where we're going to speak about Mafia and the anti-Mafia movement in Palermo and around Palermo. Some movie, like The Godfather, show you a very romantic version of Mafia. Nothing to do with reality. Believe me, the Mafia bosses and nothing to do with Marlon Brando Al Pacino. Basically, it's the version the Mafia wants to show to people. The, the most dangerous of the Mafia group ever existed in Cosa Nostra. Cosa Nostra is the name of the Mafia organization in Sicily. The rule over the Mafia, over the Cosa Nostra, the Sicilian Mafia, for uh, more than 20 years. I want you to understand if you don't know what pizza is. So, addio pizza literally means goodbye pizza. Goodbye is clear, but pizza is, uh, is an extortion, is a percentage on your income, if you are a businessman, the Mafia asks you in order to don't damage your shop. In the movies, they call it protection money. But, I mean, that one is, once again, romanticized because the only protection you got is from the same people that ask you for the money. So the right name, the right term is extortion. It's an extortion. The 80% of the shops in Palermo were still paying the pizza.
we are surrounded by 7,000 square meters of authentic Byzantine mosaics, 12th century. The target, the aim, the goal was to spread Christianity in Sicily that has been an heretic land, I mean, was, was Muslim. Why images? They should have used also words. They could tell everybody the Old Testament, the new one, should have been harder because people were speaking different languages. So images are an international tool of communication. Why we have here? Because William II has been crowned dead when he has been only 13 years old. So he was too young to really manage power. In 1172, he was 18 years old, so he could finally really lead the, the state, the kingdom, and that's why he built Morale. You may think he is crazy. He needed to dealt with the court and the management system. Instead of that, he spent a lot of money to build a church. But try to imagine, we are in medieval age. And there were different tools. So the mass media we have now, there weren't. So how could the king spread the awareness? He was higher than archbishop building a cathedral. <laughs> this is the answer. So he built a cathedral to tell everybody that he was higher as political matters than archbishop. <laughs>